So as you can see, if I connect these two together, it turns on my, my controller. Now, do not ever trust the colors on your harness because as you can see, these two are not um, orange and brown. I did continuity check with my voltmeter. That's the continuity mode. And I just put one, one of the nodes, uh, one of the probes on one of the pins that uh, either 21 or 22. And I check with every color on my harness right here. So I checked that uh, 21 is yellow and 22 is blue. It may be different. Always check, do not ever trust colors. Let's continue. So I'm not using the stock converter because it does not provide the diagram of uh, which color uh, and its uh, purpose. So I'm just making it easier for myself. I'm using my own, a stronger one, better one. Of course, all the links will be in the description for every product. Now I need to make enough space here to put the new one because it's slightly bigger. It almost fits, but all I need to do is remove a few, a few plastic parts from the inside to make it sit tight in there. It's really simple, you have output and input. On the input, you take the battery voltage, solder it to positive and negative this side, the input, and on the output, it will give out five volts. Pretty simple, right? So all of the lights, the rear and both of the front, we're gonna wire in uh, onto output terminal. Check out the colors, black goes with yellow and green goes with red. That means all of the LEDs on the rear light will be, will be on.
um, this is a protection board, so your uh, actual plastic board won't crack. So I'm cutting this part off because it's unnecessary. There's no load in this area right in between the triangle. And without that, it will be much easier to work and to put cables through. So just for, uh, for an easier job. Now the phone app. Alright, I'm gonna also share a configuration file that all you're gonna have to do is to copy and paste it to a certain folder in your phone and then through the through the app itself you're gonna choose this file and flash it onto the controller, save it and you're basically done. I've uh, restarted the controller and it still shows, uh, throws out this error, annoying error because there's no really reason for it because there's no actual fucking throttle but what we do, I will of course make a throttle and connect it but for now, just if I want to check if everything is fine I'm going to throttle menu and in control command source I'm picking serial that means uh, he won't throw that error again because he will look for the controller input from some other place now as you can see there's still an error all I need to do is to restart it wait a bit connect to it again you see no error right now and we're going to motor and up to motor setup this is a quick uh, auto tuning so it made for the controller to recognize uh, which motor it works with and make some fine auto tuning to it so we hit run this is the correct response of the motor slow whining uh, uh, slightly it turns slightly in any direction doesn't really matter and it winds just a little then we copy that and go for the second run and we just wait it, what, what it does it recognizes the angles of how sensors so um, the operation will be precise and efficient and copy we are basically done configuring it on the app by the way going back to live feed and hitting this green button to save parameters if you want to do that uh, next time you're restarting your controller uh, all the parameters will be gone Now this is how I uh, mark the holes I need to drill in the frame to, um, to attach the controller to it. Why do we do that? Uh, these controllers are freaking tiny and the amount of power they're out outputting is pretty big. So they tend to get, get hot a lot and it's, uh, it's, it's less mandatory when you're using stock battery and the controller is uh, limited 
but wing for a high performance uh, battery and the controller will be fully unlocked it will require uh, to use the body as a heat sink it will the controller itself will heat up and then it will just transfer the heat from uh, that plate of course we're gonna use some thermal paste in between and it's gonna pass it forward to the frame which will be used as a heat sink uh, so this is how I um, mark the holes I need to drill for the controller now I need to make sure I'm not hitting the existing uh, bolts Thing. let's see somewhere like here like that and we have two holes to drill this is a dummy SI it's a burnt one so I'm just using it for the measurements now some thermal paste here you can see thermal grease paste doesn't really matter it's the same one that uh, wait a sec it's the same one that's being used uh, on um, com computers cpus the processors it just helps to transfer the heat from point a to point b so that's what we're gonna do uh, it's important to apply thin layer of it because if you put too much of it it will prevent from the heat to be transferred from point A to point B so that's basically more than enough thin layer of it just to fill the air gaps all right cool this is done this thing is pretty nasty so you might want to use some gloves, but you know. Cable routing. This we're gonna put underneath. So it fits pretty neatly. This will. Hmm. Let me see. Let me somehow hide it here. Yeah. Uh -huh. 